A young lad once asked me quite curiously Of the shanty song sung by the folks of the sea And he wondered out loud how he might make such a tune That he could post and would go viral real soon So I told that young lad everything that I know About all the right chords and where they might go And the adventurous sound of the Dorian mode With the rhythms of a sea shanty flow but I can't keep on singing through the lesson this way So it's time to cut quickly to the part where I say I'm Jake Lizio, and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know to write your very own sea shanty or pirate theme song This is a video I've thought about making for quite a while but it isn't until recently where sea shanties seem to be trendy all of a sudden You see, even though I'm not on TikTok, I swear I keep seeing these videos pop up of people adding progressively more complicated harmonies to the song The Wellerman. And these videos are pretty entertaining to watch, and I figured some of you out there might be interested in learning how to compose music like this. And fortunately, it's pretty easy. There are only a limited supply of tricks that you need to know in order to really accurately recreate that style of music. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the importance of the rhythmic structure of these sea shanties. Most of these pirate theme songs and sea shanties are structured in either 6-8 or 12-8 or 4-4 four four with triplets and a heavy shuffle feel. So this is all triple meter. This is all stuff with three notes per beat. So if this is my quarter note. We're hearing lots of one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And that easily turns into the shuffle feel of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So 6-8, 12-8, 4-4 with shuffles, those are all completely legitimate options for these sea shanties because they give you this bounce and variations of that bounce with triplets as well. And these shuffled beats or these triple meter beats have more motion than them, than regular eighth notes. If I just listen to straight eighth notes and try to make it a pirate song, this could be my pirate song, that works. But if I shuffle those eighth notes like this, this could be a pirate song. I mean, immediately, it just has more of like a beer sloshing effect to it. And the reason this rhythm alone is so associated with sea shanties and pirate music is obviously because of the fact that when a pirate with a wooden leg walks across the deck of a ship, this is the rhythm that it creates. And even though I totally made up that fact, it's still fun to pretend that it's true because there is something more adventurous about these 6-8 patterns, about these 12-8 patterns, than there is about those straight ahead driving eighth notes. Now, once you've settled on some kind of idea Idea of rhythm structure, then I think it's a good idea to start approaching what notes and scales and chords should we use. And when you think about what keys should we write in, it's pretty obvious that a pirate's first true love is the C. So we should pick the C. However, I'm not going to pick C major, because C major is too happy. I want to write something a little bit more downtrodden, a little foggier, and I think the minor scale would be a very good choice for that. So that's C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and C. That's the C minor scale. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ditch the second note and the sixth note completely. We'll get rid of those notes, and what we're left with is C pentatonic minor instead. Now, the pentatonic minor scale is a wonderful scale to be using to compose these little C shanty melodies. I'd specifically like to comment on the fact that when you're in pentatonic minor, I want you to jump back a whole step to grab the flat seven and then come back to my root. Just that movement of of flat seven back to my root is always kind of has a piratey feel to it. So if I'm just kind of counting through some six, eight or four, four rhythms with a shuffle, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three. All I'm doing is going up and down pentatonic minor with that shuffle feel. One, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four, a one. And if you start thinking of singing those notes instead, this could be my pirate song, this could be my shanty right now, has a little bit of that bounce, right? It's starting to get towards that vibe. Now, if the pentatonic minor scale is too limiting for you, I would just recommend start adding in that second note to your scale sequences as well. And maybe start adding in more triplets instead of just a shuffle feel. So here's just few notes of C minor, I'm only using the, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, the flat seventh, still kind of focusing on the triplet feel. 
and the shuffle feel, and you can hear if I was singing that, that would feel very, very piratey, very sea shanty-ish. Now before we go any further, I have to mention that orchestration is really everything. If I play all these right rhythms and all these right notes, but I do it on the wrong instruments, it's not going to maintain that piratey feel. If this is all done on pianos and harps, well those instruments aren't found on pirate ships and, you know, the sailors' vessels. It's, it's you know, the instruments you would hear in that environment would be like a flute, you'd hear lots of percussion, right? You'd hear lots of tambourines and drums and stuff like that, uh, maybe a fiddle, but you're not going to hear, you know, uh, the the aristocratic instruments of the orchestra being played for pirate songs, uh, unless it's for, you know, modern day cinema. But orchestration is really simple, just to think about the instruments that evoke that feel for you, and to me, it's not electric guitars. If I play pirate music with an electric guitar, I end up getting a lot of Viking metal, I get a lot of music like Korpiklani. <laughs> a lot of folk metal, which is fun. But the only difference between these genres isn't really their musical content, it's just the orchestration. It's how did we produce the notes? What instruments did we use? How loud, how fast did we do it? But a lot of these genres, folk music, um, Viking metal, uh, and this pirate sea shanty style, they all share, share many, many commonalities. But the big difference between them is just in the production and the arrangement and the orchestration of the instruments that are picked and how they're used. So if you did have to pick a limited palette of instruments to write a shanty in, I would suggest things like the flute, um, lots of drums, maybe the fiddle, uh, lots of wooden sounds, and lots of singing. You want that drunk male pirate choir to really give off that effect of this is a sea shanty really being sung by actual sailors. Now let's talk a little bit about chords. In the key of C minor, these are the different chords that I'm allowed to play. And in any minor key, I think the chords you really want to be looking for for these C shanties are the three chord, in this case that would be E flat major, and the flat seven, which would be B flat major, back to C minor. I feel like if with that shuffle feel, the flat three chord really brightens things up and adds a lot of, you know, um, a little optimism, a little bit of the optimism we want, a little sunshine to these pirate shanties. You don't want them to be too dark. They do have to have that adventurous kind of um, triumph to them. And that flat three chord really brings in that brightness, even though we're in a dark minor key. And really, that flat seven chord is hugely important too. I think in the minor keys, the way that flat seven chord just bumps us back to the tonic, you can write an entire jig just with those two chords and it's gonna maintain a really nice adventurous flow to it. Now the song The Wellerman does have quite a bit of the flat six chord, which is a wonderful chord. It's a very dramatic chord, but I don't want something that dramatic. I would rather go for the adventurousness of borrowing from Dorian. So C minor, we already know the notes and chords of. C Dorian, all we have to do is take the A flat, let's make it an A instead, because the Dorian scale is just a minor scale with a natural sixth. So this would be the C Dorian scale instead. And if I try to build chords, then there's some differences here. Most importantly, what I can do is I can now play an F major chord, which I find to be a wonderful uh, effect in any of these kind of adventurous songs. Dorian has a little bit of brightness to it, a little bit of optimism, but it still revolves around a minor tonic. So I highly suggest that when you're even in a minor key, suggest think about going to that four chord, but making it major instead, and then moving all the notes around it to get a little bit of that Dorian flavor involved in your chord progression. Now I want you to hear a little bit of the difference between what the minor feel is versus the Dorian feel. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this very simple pattern it only uses the first five notes of the minor scale or the Dorian scale. They're actually shared. This is all I'm going to do is I'm just going to play this pattern. And in the background, what I'm going to do is play the chords from C minor. I'm going to play uh, a C minor chord and an F minor chord like this. C minor. F minor. And you hear how dark that is? You hear how really like depressing and that's much very very dark sound but if I use the chords from C Dorian instead I'd have an F major underneath that instead so let's listen to the same riff with C minor and then F major 
And hopefully you hear that that's a much brighter and much more optimistic and more adventurous sound than the darkness of the minor four chord, which is found in minor. So when I'm looking for adventure, when I'm looking for excitement, I often think about swapping this minor four chord for a major four chord and thinking Dorian instead of minor. Now, the last thing I want to bring up might seem like common sense, but it's important to remind everybody about is that, you know, you have to really nail the, all aspects of this besides just the music theory. Things like the vocal performance, you know, you're, there's certain kind of vocal performances that would not work for a sea shanty, in my opinion. Things like a really theatrical, glee-style high school musical, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing gritty and dirty and drunken about that. Um, you're probably going to want some accents, you know. I don't want to hear a, a crisp Midwestern American accent singing a, a sea shanty, so I'm going to put on a fake accent just to sing that because it'll help emulate that genre a little bit better. And the lyrics and the words you choose, you know, if you're using words that evoke imagery of a ship or a bell or the fog or the lighthouse, like these are all things that will subconsciously put you into the, the realm of a sea shanty and of a pirate song without, you know, um, relying on music theory or anything like that. You're just thinking about how can we evoke those images in somebody else's brain. And a huge part of that is the words you choose. But when you put together all these concepts that I just talked about, the six, eight rhythms, the triple meters, the minor scale, combining that minor scale with the Dorian scale and the Dorian chords, but also experimenting with pentatonic minor and thinking about orchestration and arrangement and the environment of a sea shanty, I think you're ready to start making pirate music. And I think you'll find out it's actually a lot simpler than you might suspect. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy this video, please thank my wonderful Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Without them, these videos would not exist. If you'd like to join them, you can take a look at the link in the description. Also, just last month, I released a complete music theory and songwriting course, nearly nine hours of streamlined edited content. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely check below to find out more. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.